Okay. Good evening, everybody. It is a Cherie Styles here, CEO and founder of Wear Your Confidence, and you are tuned into the Confidence Corner. This uh, series, we are talking about millennials making moves, and this is the Wives Edition. And we have here tonight with us Mrs. Chanel McCord. She is a licensed therapist. She's a LPC, LMNOP, QRC, hey. all them other letters <laughs> behind her name. She is a dear friend and sister of mine. And we're just going to have some girl talk and we're going to let you in on our conversation. Um, so let's just get into it. You can tell the people a little bit about yourself and the proper letters that go behind your name. I'm putting some respect wait. I'm on trying your to, name. I'm trying to share it. Wait all wait. right, all right, so cool. So let me do the I'm same thing to share too. It. I wanna make cool. sure that we get people up on here. All right, it's shared on my page. Hello, everybody. <laughs> I am um, Chanel McCoy. As Cherie said, I am a licensed professional counsel in the state of New Jersey. Um, and so easier said to remember, I am a licensed therapist in the state of New Jersey. Um, I'm also the CEO of Oasis Counseling Center and the founder of Oasis Wellness Group, organization based on helping to spread mental health awareness and to break stigma in mental health, um, especially in minority communities. Um, and so I'm excited to be here tonight. Thank you for having me. Yes, thank you for being here tonight. I see people starting to come on. Hey, Doris, how are you? Um, those of you who are coming on, please share the stream with the people because this is going to be very, very interesting. I think I have like a little tagline now. So we should like, tagline? bring the crackers, I have to see. So we don't get to the juicy, the juicy stuff. Oh, you should have told me I would have bought like a little mug. I know I have a fake one. I wouldn't I'm have been drinking one. anything out of it, but <laughs> I would have had a cute one. <laughs> I'm gonna make sure that I get one. Uh, so let's let's talk a little bit about confidence. This is the wives edition. So you Ooh. are a millennial. You're making moves. You're doing the daggone thing. You're a therapist. You're a wife. You're a business owner. You're also a licensed minister, a friend, a daughter, all that good stuff. Let's start at the very beginning. How can you describe or take us on your confidence journey? What has that looked like? What does that look like? So um, for me, that is a loaded question. And the reason why it's a loaded question, because the reality for me is that I feel like I'm still on my confidence journey. Um, I think I think for the most part that people think when you see a certain thing of a person, right? Um, you see people out there doing stuff and you're doing lives and you're running a business and whatever the case is, I think the automatic perception is that that person is confident and they've already arrived and they know who they are and all of that stuff. And the reality is, is I'm learning to be confident as I go. You know, I think about the story in the Bible and it says that as they went, they were healed. Mm -hmm. That is that is how I would describe my confidence journey. As I go, I get confident or I gain more confidence. I don't think that I have yet arrived, um, but it's hard sometimes because imposter syndrome is real. Um, if if in, anybody has never heard of imposter break syndrome, it down, break it down. you know, many, um, especially therapists, the conversation in the healing community, if you will, is a lot of times we suffer with imposter syndrome. When we're out here, we're in the trenches, we're doing the work, but it's just like, who am I? Who do I think I am out here trying to be somebody's therapist, you know, type of thing. You don't feel like you're worthy to be able to do, even though you may be anointed, skilled, and trained to be able to do the work. So I would describe my journey definitely as I go, I am becoming. Oh, I like that. As that is I, very I, good. I like that too. Someone type that in there. Y'all can steal that later. As I go, I'm becoming. Make sure I get my okay, credit. Obama. <laughs> Give me my credit. <laughs> I like that. No, and that is so true. None of us have arrived. I don't believe that anyone 
has fully arrived. I don't think Michelle Obama even herself has fully arrived. Confidence, as I keep saying, is a constant journey. It's a constant discovery and rediscovery of Absolutely. who you are and um, what it is that you like and what you don't like and accepting the changes of who you are. And so Absolutely. that's beautiful. That was so beautiful and poetic, what you said. I mean, I be trying. I be trying <laughs> Cause looking at you, like Chanel, you've really been doing the daggone thing. Like you've been doing lives day in and day out. Like she you live, you're living on lives. Like you're living <laughs> your life on lives. <laughs> and I'm like, yo, go I'm ahead, bad. girl. So no one, I'm I don't bad. think, I wouldn't think if I didn't know you, know you. Like I was like, oh, she do, she's killing it. She don't mean nothing to nobody go ahead therapist therapize the people right yeah you know um <laughs> i've learned that consistency um here's where i'm at in my life right now you want to talk about confidence i'm at a place where i wasn't invited to a lot of platforms and so i decided to build my own I decided to create what I wasn't being invited to because I know that I have a message. I know I have something to say. I know that I've been anointed to heal people mentally and emotionally. And so one day God just put it in me to start building your platform. And what I found out is when you start to build your platform, people notice consistency is noticed and then people start reaching out and then people start coming you know and saying stuff like you know with my t-shirt journey I've been selling them t-shirts out like I got like five shirts left the crazy thing is I got those shirts over a year ago and I couldn't sell one I couldn't sell one but I got confident and I decided that I was going to put myself out there and then God gave me strategy he gave me strategy about how to do it and advertising and marketing and then I was like you know what I'm just gonna rock my confidence I'm gonna go out there yes I'm a therapist and I'm a t-shirt vendor and my t-shirts is hot and guess what people start to listen and notice so I've learned in my confidence journey is that when you're not invited to the table you build your own I love that and that's where I am too Listen, I haven't been invited to, to several tables. I tried to get there and it was like, yeah, no. <laughs> so you create your own platform. <laughs> I wish it, I wish it was that easy as I said it. Like, okay, yeah, no. All right, well, I'm just going to do this. No, it took a lot of no's, took a lot of crying. It took a lot of, well, why not? Am I not good mm -hmm. enough? Like it took a lot of that before mm -hmm. I said, okay, you're not inviting me to the runway. I'm going to create my own runway. And so Absolutely. I have Rare Confidence University. I'm like, all right, yes. so I'm going to let me get on TV right now. Okay, well, I'll create my YouTube channel. So it's doing that. And then you said being consistent, being confident and consistent. Yeah. Listen, you need to do a new series called Confidently Consistent. Oh, that's nice. Or Consistently Confident. Consistently Confident. You know what? Yeah. That may be a t-shirt for you. I like it. Make sure Shaquille, I get some royalty. Write that down. Write that down. <laughs> <laughs> write it down so I can make a t-shirt because I need new t-shirts. Oh, speaking of shirts, I'm going to just rock in my, uh, my black. Oh, I should have worn mine tonight. <laughs> oh, They're worn available mine. at storefrontier.com backslash where you're confident. So, yeah. But you are doing all of that. And since this is the wives edition, let's talk mm -hmm. about all of that on top of being a wife. We spoke last week with Nakira and she was saying that there are different compartments to her confidence. So it was like, okay, I have confidence in my salon and but then I have a different type of confidence when it comes to my marriage and then a different type of confidence when it comes to, you know, wherever she is. Can you relate? Is that something that you have too? Is it like com compartmentalized? I agree 100%. I think um, in certain areas, your conf like in certain areas, I can think about my confidence is on 100. Like my confidence is on 100 in certain areas. And then certain areas, um, I still dumb myself down. Um, if that makes sense. I still, um, you know, one of the things that I've always been transparent about something that I struggle with is that it is hard for me and it has been for a long time to see myself as an adult. So I see myself doing adult things, but in my mind, I'm still Nelly. 
or nail nail, like if that makes sense. And so in certain areas of my life, like I'm walking it out, I know I'm doing the daggone thing and I'm confident in that. But then there's certain areas where I still have to program my mind to recognize that I'm not Nelly from the block anymore. Not Lil Nell Nell, right? <laughs> um, I am Chanel McCord. I, I am a grown up. And so I think, you know, I definitely see where Nakira was coming from and that, you know, you get stuck in these different compartments and you rock your confidence differently depending on what compartment you're operating out of, if that makes sense. That makes sense. That makes a lot of sense. And so with you doing all of that, being confident, being a wife, how do you find that it has been easier or harder as a wife than as a single as you're making moves? You know, um, that is a loaded question because, <laughs> because I don't know making moves apart from being married. Does that make sense? Mm -hmm. Like when I became, as I'm becoming, I was already married. And for me, it's a little bit different too because I've been with my husband for 15 years. Right. And so even though we weren't married, I was still single at that point. It wasn't until well after being married and into my marriage where I actually started to become. So I don't really know that I truly fully understand making moves outside of my marriage. Gotcha. That makes sense. That makes sense. Yeah. Cause me, I'm a single and I'm making moves. Like I'm, there's no ball. I'm sorry. The, mm -hmm. the term is bad. <laughs> ball and chain. I ain't got that. Only, <laughs> only chain I have is Rocky. <laughs> Not yet. Okay. Okay. The only chain that I have is Rocky. <laughs> and I can lock him up. <laughs> and I can lock him up, but I understand what you're saying. So it's a team effort. Absolutely. And it's always Absolutely. been a team effort for you. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. Absolutely. That's all I know, you know, and for me, that worked. That worked for me. Nice. I like it. So then how do you, how do you balance all it is that you're doing, making moves in your industry, you know, trying to be progressive and being confident and still being a friend mm -hmm. and all of that? How do you balance Um, That is a balancing act. <laughs> um, I think especially as millennials, right? We, we, we have grown up to have to have a mindset where we, a lot has been placed on us from generations before. Like generations before didn't have student loan debt like we had. Houses oh. and mortgages and rents were never oh. as expensive as it is, you know, to be able to travel and to do certain things. So, you know, generations before us was able to have one job, come home by five o'clock, spend time with their family, have their weekends off and enjoy life. That is just not the reality for us as millennials, right? We've always had to learn how to balance. For as long as I can remember, I've never had just one job. And that's just the truth. Since high school, I've never had just one job. Oh, you um, I've, always, I've always carried <laughs> multiple jobs. And I know I get that from my father. My father they call, they, people call my father Jamaican. You know the stereotype <laughs> that Jamaicans have like mad jobs? Yes. Um, and so for me, work has always been my work. Like you just work, you work, you get it done. You hustle by any means necessary. And so I actually have to pull back and stop myself. One thing that I'm grateful for with my husband is that he reminds me when I haven't had enough social interaction. Um, I am by nature introverted. Like I can, I would like the lockdown. I wasn't, the lockdown didn't affect me the way it affected other people. I'm like, yo, I'm home. I'm Good. chilling. I can run my business from home. I could work my full-time job from home. I can be by myself and watch movies. Right. So that was cool for me. But there are times like when it's time to be social, like my husband will actually say to me, he'd be like, when's the last time you hung out with somebody? Or even last week he was sick and, um, I had previously made plans to go hang out at a friend's house and I forgot and she hit me up and was like, would you coming over? And so I had made plans with him and I was like, oh, babe, I forgot to tell her that I was coming over or whatever. And he's like, you know what? Go. And I'm just like, no, because, you know, we got to have our you were sick. I'm going to spend time. He was like, no, because you need that more than I do. Mm -hmm. And so for me, it's I'm grateful that he partners with me and God uses him to like remind me it's time to pull back. Now it's time to focus in on friendship time right now it's time to focus on those things um and just making sure that you know even even with our marriage it's easy oftentimes to be like two ships passing in the night because like i said i'm hustling he hustling he got his side thing and honestly that has been a course of our marriage there was 
times in our marriage where he worked overnight. I worked during the day. So he was sleep while I was at work. When I would come home, he'd be getting up to leave. And so we wouldn't see each other. And so we have to be extra intentional about making sure that we're not allowing work and dream obligations to overcome our relationship. Because what I am aware of is at the end of the day, let's say, God forbid, I don't think it's going to happen no time soon, but let's say, God, what if, what if Oasis goes belly up? What if the schools decide to let me go and shut down permanently? I know that he's my constant. My husband is my constant. So making sure that I'm investing time into where my real constant is and then just hoping and praying and trusting God that everything else will work out. That is so sweet. Oh, I hope he watches this later. That is so sweet. I love it. I love it. Your husband is your constant. That's a beautiful thing. I'm about to make that a shirt. Do it. I got all these shirts. See, that's why I'm saying, like, this is the season. I'm, let me break this, that down. This is. Come my through. Is and then my husband is my constant. We talk about the um the marketing stuff later. I'm about to do that. <laughs> I'm listening. Listen, go ahead, write down the million dollar uh, t shirt. I, I really am, though. Why we, why we you can give me um 10%. I'll take five. I'll take five. Girl, bye. <laughs> <laughs> That is awesome. That is beautiful. That is beautiful. I love it. I love it. I love it. So like, as people see you and they are trying to get to where it is that you are, because you know how people always perceive us where to be. Where exactly am I? Be, you are the Chanel <laughs> McCord, the therapist with all the letters behind her name. <laughs> the like educated that. woman who knows about mental health. Like, Chanel is the mental health guru that we go to. I receive it. That's who you are in my eyes. The mental it. health guru. So for those who are trying to get to where you are or achieve the level of success that they perceive that you have, what would be some advice that you would give to millennials, wives, or any um, lady that is trying to make moves? Um, the first thing I would say, and I know that this point is kind of beaten like a dead horse everywhere you go, but it's what works for me. Vision. Vision is so important. It is so important to have a real vision. Um, you know, I, I remember Oasis was built out of a random class project in college. Wow. Freshman year of college, um, during freshman orientation time, you know how they have like those freshman classes, you take whatever to get you acquainted. So we had to do, I don't even remember the project, it was something about future or whatever. And so I was like, all right, I don't really know. I know I wanted to be a psychologist. I like, I always knew that throughout my life. And so what I did is I wrote down, okay, Oasis, like Oasis just found it real spy -y. And so my vision was to have like a spa, but it was like, oh, oh a, a self-care, a self-wellness center. And I did this whole project on this Oasis and it was going to be a spa and I was going to help people with their mind and all this other stuff or whatever. I did the project, turned it in, didn't think about it again. But it always stayed in my spirit. And I didn't realize that at that time, God was using that project to plant vision. And he brought it back to my remembrance. And then the name Oasis just always stuck with me. And I was determined from there to continue to build. You have to remain consistent even, and, and again, another point that is beaten down, but it is the truth. Um, and I would just be crazy to not speak it. You have to remain consistent even when it seems like nobody's supporting. You have to remain consistent even when it seems like nobody is watching. Oh, yeah. There are days, there are days I got 300, 800 viewers on my line. I'm like, yo, and then there are days where it's cricket, 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 it's, it's two or three people. Three now, as I've been building, as I've been consistent, I'm getting more views, I'm building more momentum. But in the beginning you know facebook memories is uh it's something else boy it's a blessing and a curse <laughs> facebook memories is something else like i oftentimes almost daily i get facebook memories from way back when when i officially started oasis the organization and i would do these little five minute videos sitting in my car or sitting at my job office or whatever and i'm just like wow and honestly no views on those videos nobody was watching nobody was trying well facebook didn't give the option to share them whatever but there was like really no views on that but and i would give up at times because i was looking at my surroundings instead mm -hmm. of looking at what god had for me straight ahead and so he planted seed of vision in me and i continued 
continue to speak the vision. I like literally will sit down and just imagine the Oasis Center. There was that one time a couple of years ago, these pictures of these mansions were going up and I would just post them just to Facebook. Like this is the Oasis Spa. This is yeah. the retreat center. This is the staff lounge. This is the, and you know, a lot of times we do that and everybody be like, yes, girl, do that, whatever, whatever. But for me, it was planting seeds in my heart for where I want to go. Am I where I want to be right now? No because this is not the vision, but I know that what's happening now is setting the stage for what the vision is and for what it will be coming in my future, you know? And so vision, have a vision, but, and when you have vision, believe the vision that God placed on the inside of you. Believe, believe it. it, believe yourself, believe that it can really happen and then just start taking small steps. Every small step forward will eventually lead you to completion. One of the things I teach my clients all the time is to celebrate the small wins in every victory. Sometimes I'll get into sessions with my clients and they'll sit there and they'll tell me about, yeah, I messed up this week. I did this, this, that, and the third, and I didn't. And, and I'm like, wait a minute, stop. Okay, you messed up, but you recognized it. Before you wasn't even recognizing when you messed up, you was just messing up. So we're going to sit here for a minute and we're going to celebrate that small win. Let's celebrate that small win. And it changes their entire mindset. It changes yeah. their entire countenance. And they're like, yo, you, you yo, this actually worked and I did recognize <laughs> something. You know what I'm saying? So I think it's a matter of celebrating those wins, taking more steps and believe the vision that is on the inside of you. That stuff that you used to write down that you pull it to the side, pull them joints back out. Pull them books back out. The time, might as well. Pull them, pull them out. back out. Exactly. Mm -hmm. And read the vision and then start taking small steps. I'm going to shut up. I love it. You said a whole <laughs> mouthful. <laughs> you said a whole mouthful. And I hope everyone watching heard what she said. I'm going to do a short recap. So basically what she said was have vision, be consistent with the vision, and believe the vision. Have confidence in what it is that God placed in your heart to do. No matter who's watching or not watching, because believe it or not, people are watching. They will come back to the replay and they will watch and they will be blessed. And they may not ever say anything, but I promise you, that's not the reason why you're doing any of There's it. about 10 people watching this right now, but doesn't want us to know that they're watching. So they didn't click on the video, but they and just- they're still watching, watch yes. Home screen. I do not like that I just called y'all out. I just called all y'all out. Because people do that all the time. Don't leave. Don't leave. Don't but leave. We love you. Because <laughs> I be doing that sometimes too. I'm like, what y'all talking right. about? That's why, okay. that's why I can call it out. I did. <laughs> We're and then when you accidentally click on the video <laughs> and, and then you didn't mean to out, click on oh, it. Oh, dang, now I got to stay. But I love it. I love it. Yes. Have the vision. Believe the vision. Stay consistent with the vision. If you have a vision, if you're trying to make moves, period. I don't care if you're millennial. I don't care if you're a wife or whoever, you will have to believe in it, have confidence in it, dust it off, blow it off. We are in quarantine still, believe it or not. And mm -hmm. you can, you can um, dream again, believe again, write it again, do it. Listen, you're still alive. You're still able to, you still have a chance and opportunity. And as Chanel said, you have to stay focused. Don't look to the left. Don't look to the right. Don't look behind you. Stay focused and keep going Absolutely. that's the only way that we can be like chanel and make moves the way that she uh, don't be like live chanel. our life live be like jesus, <laughs> be like jesus. <laughs> yes being like jesus keeping our eyes on jesus like for real yes ma'am so before we leave is there any other let's say one more thing mm -hmm. two things one thing first all right so is there a song, is there a mantra, is there a quote, a scripture that keeps you going when you just like, you know what, I had it, I'm done, I'm ready to flip tables? Mm. Woo, uh-huh, what do I do when I'm ready to flip tables? I um, flip them, it's like, no. <laughs> <laughs> there was a day. Um, I think, honestly, you know, now I, I'm, I'm doing better, right? I'm the therapist who want to be first fruits of what it is that I'm teaching my clients. And so, you know, I work on a lot of my self-talk. I do a lot of talking out loud. So for me, um, and this is like most prevalent, like if me and my husband are not seeing eye to eye, I start, I will say out loud and I verbalize, all right, 
I'm mad right now and I want to say some stuff, but I'm not going to say some stuff. Like I've learned to, to get myself talk in order. And as I say it out loud and as I talk to myself, I start to realize how silly it sounds silly over some of the things that I want to flip tables about or that I'm mad about, you know, and just taking a moment to like process. Like I do a lot of sitting back and processing and trying to, you know, perspectives, see perspectives and different things like that. Because half of the things that we're mad about at the end of the day, you know, in a week or so, you're not going to remember anyway. And so my, my, you want to talk about mantra, it's protect your peace. Protect your peace. Protect your peace, you know protect your peace because at the end of the day when you're mad at people or people do things to you guess what they're going home and they get a good night's rest now i'm up all night really my mind racing i'm mad and fuming they scrolling facebook and playing games on their phone okay um and so i learned to protect my peace um and just talking to the holy spirit not to get all spiritual but i feel like me and the Holy Spirit got like this special relationship. I'm, I'm sure a lot of people feel this, but I just feel like, I feel like we just got a special one. Like I, like when I lost my rings, I was just like, all right, Holy Spirit. Two minutes later, my husband came with them, you know, after not being, being able to find them. Like when I'm frustrated or whatever, I'd be like, all right, Holy Spirit. And then I feel like he'll, he'll drop something in my spirit. And so protecting my peace and making sure that I'm staying close to God is so pivotal and it's so important. And every once in a while, I might have thrown a ratchet song, you know, and so just to, every once in a while. You know, I mean, it happens. But not after Pastor Doria's sermon. I deleted all my plays. Right, right. There I deleted is a spirit. everything. Listen here, there's a spirit thing. Okay. Song. Lord <laughs> Jesus. Lord. But I love what you said. Protect your peace. I had to put the glasses back on because we got serious. Like, seriously, though. You have to protect your peace. See, by this any, a, tea, uh, a mug you, moment. You know, by any means necessary. <laughs> you, have, you have to. Listen here. And the self-talk, I, I love it and I agree with it 100, 200% because we followed our words. You know, Absolutely. it starts with a thought, but once we release it out of our mouth, it's just something that Oh, I'm about to fight. So what you going to do? Oh, I'm going to fight. No, yeah. I'm going to protect my peace. So I'm going mm -hmm. to rusa and breathe right. and ask the Holy Spirit to calm right. me down. Because as a man thinks, so is he. That's what it is. That's just period. End of story. Absolutely. Awesome. Thank you so much, Chanel. Soon to be Dr. Chanel, prophesy into your life. Amen. Amen. Prophesy, honey. <laughs> <laughs> prophesy. But yes, I appreciate you so much. Thank you so much for taking the time out of your busy schedule to come and sit and talk with me. Thank you. Um, you have definitely helped the people. You definitely encouraged me tonight to keep on going and just reminded me of a few things. So I appreciate you. I love thank you. you. I love and you. And to everyone watching, thank you so much for joining in. Darice, Takima, I see you, Richard. Everyone in here, Yannick, thank you so much. I hope that you all got something from this. Please share the stream because there is someone who needs this, who needs to be encouraged, who needs to stay consistent, have the vision, and to keep on going no matter what age or stage they are in their life. Absolutely. So with that being said, I want to thank you again for tuning in. Come back next week because I'll be sitting down with the one and only Brittany and Smith. And she is going to be talking more to us. She's just always fun and bubbly. So it's going to be fun, fun, fun times. So make sure that you are here. Same time, same place. And until next time, don't forget your confidence. See you later, guys.